We're gonna we're gonna actually start the show. Like if you're watching on YouTube, the show just started just now for you. you but if you had rant. seen the show, what's that? You missed they missed my if you're on YouTube you, watching you right missed, now, you missed my rant. <laughs> you missed the rant. That means that you're not subscribed or you haven't liked the Liberty Principle Facebook page on YouTube or on Facebook because if you did, then you could have watched this live on Facebook and missed like what there's like eight minutes or so that, that that's not in the YouTube version of this show. Eight minutes. And this show, by the way, this is this daily Wednesday. And this is what's the day today? It's January thirty first, twenty eighteen. Yeah. Uh uh, on Wednesday, of course, and the title of this show is "The War on Drugs is an Op," and that's that's that that ties into what our first story is going to be on our newsfire segment. I'm Paul Gordon, and you're here with the one the true one. Niz. And I'm assuming that you've poured over all of these notes with uh, scholarly discipline and. I'm just going to have to, like, I'll just say, here's the next story. And you'd be like, I got this, man. Right? No, let me tell you. The, want me to tell you the truth? I can take a I nap. Read through, I read through the, first, uh, through the first article, and I made two notes. And by the time I got done making those two notes, my blood <laughs> pressure was about as high as, uh, you remember that Louis Black? <laughs> The comedian Louis Black. Oh, I remember. Out. Yes, sir. Very sweaty. I remember Louis Black. Yes, right. I remember him. Right. That's so my I, my, Black, I had to get up. I had to get up and leave the studio, go for a walk, and calm myself down before I came back just in time to sit down for the show. So, so, so I don't, I don't know how many other stories we're gonna get to. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, what well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the bump for the first segment. Who knows if we'll get to the other two segments? I guess we're gonna find out. But I'll play the first bump here and and pretend that we're gonna get through them all. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force learn from these stories? This is Newsfire. Set your news on fire. Yeah, this this segment, which you didn't, you couldn't hear the the bump, so you didn't hear the last part. This is news fire, where we set your news on fire. And I would say this first story is 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 all about that. Now, I wrote this article, and it was uh, I wrote it on iState, but it was also picked up by the Daily Sheeple. And it's about your boy, Jeffy. Oh, my buddy. <laughs> your, my your my buddy. pal. You know, he's he's the gift that keeps on giving. It's like oh. it, it, if 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 you really love Donald Trump, one of the hardest parts of being able to sustain your love for Donald Trump is Jeff <laughs> Sessions. Without a right? doubt. I mean, Without I don't love doubt. Donald Trump, but I'm just saying if you do. Jeff Sessions, he's your guy that he still really makes, makes you it cringe. difficult. Yeah, still makes you cringe. So the title of the article is How Sessions is Using the War on Drugs to Assault Anonymity. And really, for the first part of the article, I'm just going through, and I'm not going to read the article, but for the first part of the article, I'm just going through, and, and I'm kind of given a, a little outline of what the war on drugs actually is. And the war on drugs, it's not at all about protecting you from the dangers of, of using drugs or protecting you from the dangers of drug users or, for that matter, drug dealers. The war on drugs is, it has, has become two things. And those two things are a mechanism for control. And then the second thing is that... In, initially, it started off as a mechanism for control, but they soon began to realize they could actually make money off this thing, and they they make money in a in a number of ways. One of the ways they make money is, well, the departments that are getting funded to fight the war on drugs. They don't they don't want the war on drugs to end because then the funding for the departments end. And another way, of course, is with the grand and glorious civil asset forfeiture program which I believe in 2015, it took in more money than all of the burglars in America combined did. So 
<laughs> well, that's right, a just pretty good. Proving thing. once again that the biggest thief in existence is the federal <laughs> government. Right. I mean, it's, there's there's uh, no arguing that point after you get that statistic out. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, they make money in other indirect ways, you know, with fines and and then the big way that they make money, you know, half the people in prisons are there because they either were selling or possessing drugs. And the private prison business is a huge, huge money maker. They're, they're run by private companies that have exclusive contracts from the government. So they're really extensions of government. They're, this is not the free market, folks. And... And in exchange for running the prisons, they get to they get to use the prisoners for labor that they charge other companies for. They make huge profits, or they get or kickbacks, people, or or you have politicians that get kickbacks from it. That was the case that happened right in Pennsylvania with the Cash for Kids uh, scandal, where the judges were getting they owned a slice of the pie at that uh, uh, juvenile detention center that was built, and so they were sentencing kids. Uh, to ridiculous terms in juvenile detention for like this stupid infractions like, oh, you're out 10 minutes late past curfew. That'll be six years in the gulags for you. Right. <laughs> right. A new yeah. boat for me. <laughs> and I mean, and you think about it, it in, in that methodology, they were actually, they were controlling people. They were keeping the undesirables in places where they knew it would be really difficult for them to excel. And they were making money. So that was, that was like, they killed two two birds with one stone right. with that move. And the only reason they got caught was because kids started getting killed in this place, which is bad. Right. I mean, if otherwise if, if, they'd if still, when the media picks they'd still up be running it. that racket today. They'd still right. be running. Shifrella would be like, ah, this is the biggest mansion I've ever owned. Ah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so the war on drugs is it's about money and it's about control. Now the control has been pretty directly on the masses. But now this is where Jeff Sessions comes in. He's an innovator. He's uh he's he's right. Just just so you know, just so you know, Jeff, uh he hates weed more than he loves Jesus. And he loves Jesus a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. It, it, I mean, honestly, I think if he had a you know choice between saving Jesus or ending the war on drugs. You know, he Jesus, would, you know, I love you. Oh, but, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love you, but man, sorry, I Jesus. hate them drugs. Yeah, I hate sorry, them. Sorry, Jesus, the jazz cabbage got to go. <laughs> yeah. Jazz cabbages has got to go. So, uh, uh, and I excerpt here from Mary Jane, a website which covers marijuana news. So U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is bringing his obsession with the war on drugs to the dark corners of the web. Now, I wouldn't call it that. I would just call it the deep web. I wouldn't fall into the narrative even of call calling it the, it the deep dark web. web. The web. I mean, he's a psychopath. The no, web. I call it's it the, the deep, deep web. web. I don't even. I wouldn't no, even I would give him that it. satisfaction of saying that he's going after the darkest corners of the web. He's not, that's not, no, no, that's not what's happening here. He's going after your grandparents that have glaucoma. That's what he's trying to do. That moved out to Colorado so that they could puff on doobies to help their eyes. <laughs> no. Oh, he's going to pick them off. They're easy. They're, they're low hanging fruit. And, and they're the one, you know, that, that drives up his uh, numbers, you know, look, look, see how effective this program is. More federal dollars, please. But no, he is, he is, they, I mean, they shut down that alphabet uh, city, whatever it was. Uh, about a year ago, I mean, Alphabet City is one of many things, but it was a pretty big operation that they shut down, and they and they and they can hit those big operations, and they can, they can hit those big juicy targets, but that still just cro it, it just scratches the surface of of this quote unquote dark deep web. I'm, I'm going to call it, yeah, I'm going to call it deep web, not dark web, because the dark web that's an attempt. To demonize and... Uh, That's the use of scary language. You should be scared. Mm -hmm. You should be scared because there's no lights in that part of Why the internet. Why don't we just call it the freedom web? We're going to call it the freedom <laughs> right, web. The, right, right, right. Yeah. So he's targeting the freedom web or the liberty web, whatever you want to call it. He's targeting the liberty web. And so he makes this announcement. Uh, well, it, first, it was a press release that, that, that he announced 
that he's that he's forming something called the Joint Criminal Opioid Darknet Enforcement Team. J code. I mean, that sounds wow. like a really bad '70s action adventure police show right. that I would have liked when I was a kid, but not so much now. <laughs> I wonder how you rectify that with the you know the U.S. soldiers protecting opium uh, opium fields and right. poppy fields in uh, in Afghanistan. How do they rectify? Are they going to arrest themselves? You don't need to reconcile things like that. You just you put them in separate corners, far enough apart from one each other, and uh, and then Trump That's says something about assholes. What's that? <laughs> That's different because we're doing it. Right. It's okay when we do it. Well, you don't even have to say that because people don't very very they're not generally going to be making the connections because they're going to be debating about Trump saying assholes. That's right. That's in, in, yes. <laughs> instead of instead of looking at the formation of J code, but you know what? If you haven't done anything wrong, you don't have anything to fear, Niz. Now the thing oh, is, right. I don't do drugs. I'm not. I'm not like. I don't know. I I don't well, have a great some desire. People. What's that? <laughs> I'm not like he. Paul, Paul says it with his pinky in the air. I'm not like some people. I'm not like some. People, some <laughs> naughty people. I, I, I just, right. I don't do drugs. But you do. I, I don't you have do a drugs. huge. You do drugs. You just do legal drugs. You drink alcohol. That's a yes, drug. Yes, you're right. You smoke you're right. cigarettes. That's a I drug. Do. You drink I do soda. Do drugs. That's got caffeine. That's a I drug. Do caffeine. You take over the counter medications. You take a Tylenol. Guess what, there, chief? That's I a take drug drugs there, for spanky. my brain awareness. I, I take drugs, but I mean, right. I don't. The 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 drugs that give you the more, the drugs that other people say are bad. Well, I mean, even alcohol. I don't. I hardly ever drink alcohol. I mean, I do occasionally, but you know, it's not. So I'm like, I mean, of all of all the inebriating drugs, the drugs that that directly and immediately and obviously altered your consciousness. Right. All drugs basically alter what, your consciousness. Basically, what to you're a saying degree. is that we don't smoke meth here on IS Daily. That's basically what you're saying. <laughs> or is daily, right? Either <laughs> right. way. <laughs> Either way, we don't we don't no, smoke meth. No meth here. I, I, you know, I'm not. I, I don't want to say that I'm anti-drug. I'm, I mean, my my point here is I'm one of the people that has nothing to fear ostensibly from J Code, but I still have a real problem with J Code. It's 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 it it ticks me off. It I realize that there are people. And and I've met some of the of these folks, and you know, thanks to Facebook, I'm connected to a lot more people in a much broader sphere than, you know, well, social media in general. So I'm meeting people and connecting to people, and I'm actually seeing some more folks than maybe I would have otherwise that are actually affected by the quote unquote war on drugs. People that are being uh, locked up. And thrown in a cage because they have a plant on them. I don't have a plant on me. I got nothing to fear. But knowing that my neighbor, if they have a freaking plant, is going to be thrown into a cage. Yeah, that really bothers me. That bothers me to my core. And, and it really bothers me that I have other neighbors that cheer it on. I think there's nothing wrong with it. But this, what he's doing here, this is, this is, this is. I believe that that they didn't just stumble upon this. I mean, they even before Jeff Sessions, they were already doing stuff like this. Jeff Sessions is just he's just ramping it up. He's ramping up. I mean, even under the Obama administration. I mean, Ross Ulbricht, he was prosecuted under the Obama administration, and the biggest thing that they went after Silk Road for was that they were alleged that there were alleged drug transactions that were taking place. Now, my answer to that is, so what? Right, were right. Those, what business? Those, That's none of your business. I mean, unless your freaking unless, business. Right, unless unless there is an, an actual crime that's been committed, like somebody stole something from someone, someone was murdered, raped, beaten. That That's when a, an actual – when there is an actual victim, that's when there's an actual crime. The victim can't be the state because the state is not a person. It's a fiction. It doesn't actually exist. Yeah, the state – the state is a belief system that is real only insofar as people follow the belief system. 
like any other belief system, I guess you could say. Uh, every right. every belief system that's that's true. You know, no you know belief what really system burns me up person. about this. I'm I'm looking at this article here that that uh, that your article links to uh, in Mary Jane, and this this quote here from Sessions, where at this uh, DEA graduation ceremony, Sessions admonished a quote an erosion of public support for anti drug law enforcement. Well, let me let me just let me just toss this out here real quick for anyone who may be listening that may not be. Uh, listening on the uh, on the Liberty Principle page that might get a little bit confused about exactly what this means. Let me put this into perspective for you. If public support is waning, then shouldn't a government for the people, by the people, end those prohibition policies if the support for those policies is starting to wane? I mean, should they really be doubling down? I mean, a dub- doubling down on these policies that have no very little or no support for them that doesn't really sound like for the people, by the people to me. I mean, yeah, that just could be me. No, no, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. But they know best. It's it's the war on drugs does not have popular support anymore. Most people could care less about, I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there's plenty of people, you know, they, they want people to stop doing drugs. They're anti-drug. But even among that group, the majority of the folks among that group don't want people locked up in cages for doing drugs. And by the way, there's a there's another element that I actually missed in my article, and uh, this is absolutely true. This is another huge, huge benefit from the war on drugs continuing. And Ron Gallons, you pointed it out, says. He said 60 million people in the U.S. have been disarmed because of being convicted of a drug, quote, crime, unquote. And what are, what are they doing with marijuana? They're right, legalizing it's even more marijuana. Go right. Ahead. It's even more expansive than that because we, this is one of the things that we almost touched on uh, in, while we we're discussing you know, what we we're going to do for the show tonight um, before we actually went live. Um, we kind of, you know, I, I think I mentioned just a tiny little bit about the the uh, the uh, medical cannabis cards and how now if you're a medical cannabis card holder, you've just waived your Second Amendment right to own a firearm. And Depending on my, who you my talk biggest, to, but yeah, that door is my, wide open. Wide now. open. And my biggest question is, if that's the case, then why, when I get prescribed Vicodin, do I not waive my rights to the second to, to owning a firearm? Why, if I go and I buy, remember Jolt Cola? If I go on eBay and I buy a Jolt Cola with three times the caffeine, why am I not? I mean, it's still drugs. I mean, let's if 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 we're just gonna toss rights out the window just because uh, you know somebody has a medical condition. I mean, hey, you're on chemo. Guess what, buddy? No Second Amendment for you. Let's just <laughs> right. roll this sucker yeah. out as far as it can possibly go. Yeah. This is stupid. A- a- any drug that you take that 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 may alter you in any way, shape, or form, you got to take painkillers. No guns for you. Got to show up and take your guns. That that'd be like three fourths of America. I I don't know. I might be a bit uh, over exaggerating there. I don't know, but maybe maybe three quarters of America is doing some sort of uh, legal. Is that a Motrin? Are you taking a Motrin? You better give Whoa. me back that gun. Give me them guns. Give me them, give guns. Me them guns. Give me them guns. <laughs> that Motrins, man, because because they can do that. But I mean, that is an excellent point. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna work my way back to to our boy Jeffy, Mister Sessions, Jeffy. with this uh, with this J code team. What do you, what do you call him? Keebler. He looks like the Keebler Ke- Elf. <laughs> Adolf Keebler. <laughs> Right, Adolf Keebler. Yeah, he quit he making cookies. He quit making cookies, and he's coming after your doobies. Pretty much. That's 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 all. That's, that's all that he knows. It's like he's it's got this rabid insistence of going after my drugs, my drugs. I think Donnie's probably with him, and I think Donnie's got this puritanical view about drugs himself. He's a teetotaler, you know. He doesn't drink. He probably takes other you know painkillers or whatever right. that the drugs he, he takes are okay <laughs> right. those ones are okay the so drugs everybody else takes that are bad so so what what you saw with silk road was just a taste and and ross albrick served a, 
as quite an example of 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 this taste. And and it was it was the two things that they're always going to use when they attack. I'm going to use a word here. Anonymity. Mm. That's the 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 other powerful tool that the drug the war on drugs provides for the government it gives the government reason to go after anonymity and the drugs are not the target the amount of drugs that they're actually going to seize from people is a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of drugs that are actually going back and forth the the i, I saw a i saw a was it a one of these Facebook videos recently? Uh, it was a it was a guy in England, and he was a he was an undercover drug cop, and he was talking about how they would work was really the, hard. Was it the Scottish guy talking about the cocaine going in and all the seals and fishermen can't catch fish when the fish are all high on cocaine, swimming super fast? No, 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 <laughs> no, wasn't it? it? This was an um, undercover guy, and he was talking about what it was like to be an undercover, why he did what he did, and what, he's really jaded now. Now he's like really looks back at his work, and he's like, "Wow, I did bad things." And he's talking about at one point they were they were doing this operation, and he'd been working on it for like six months, setting it up, and it was the they finally got the big sting operation and took down this major drug operation, and the dudes. After they took down this major drug operation, but made quite a scene. I mean, really, highly visible takedown of drug people that around, you know, for people who aren't in the drug world, they're looking and saying, yeah, they're really doing good. Look at that, man. They're really, they're making a difference, man. They're, they're, they're punching the drug people in the mouth. Wow, we're winning the drug war. And he said after they took them down and everything was done, the, his his buddies looked over to him, and, and he was still a little bit naive, I guess. And they looked over and said, wow, that's great. You know what? It's really great. For the next couple of hours, there ain't going to be no drugs on the street. Right for that's the right. next You've 10 heard. minutes. <laughs> no, no. It was it, it, Well, they said a couple of hours. Maybe it's 10 minutes. But, I mean, th that that's the reality here. And they know it. Jeff Sessions knows it. He knows that he can't begin to make a dent on the actual drug trade in America. Going after people on no. the dark web, he's going to get an infinitesimal amount of folks that are actually dealing drugs through the dark here's, web. Here's, here's what happens. Here's realistically, but his phrase, here's what dark happens. Web. I'm going to call it the Liberty Web. Okay, here, realistically, here's what happens, okay? You, you, you institute a policy of prohibition. That policy instantly creates a black market instantly because where where there is a demand there will be a supply and if the demand if the demand is for a product that is not legal congratulations you've just created yourself a black market now once you've created that black market now as you start to go after the people who are engaging in this black market activity the only thing that you're doing by locking up that one guy is driving up prices for everybody else the prices oh, you know, go more higher now. This is well. This is this. We're going to scale it down, and this is basic economics here. So now you're going to you're going to arrest that one. You got him off the street. Great job. But what you also did was you drove up the price on that particular black market product, whatever it may be. The higher price is more attractive to bring more people in to provide that product or service. I mean, it's 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 a. a uh, it's a feedback loop is, is what it is. It's a feedback loop that grows exponentially. The more people you take out of the loop, the higher the price goes, the higher the price goes, the more people come in to provide it. It's uh, it's endless. It's it's ridiculous, man. Well, the, what, what happens? Okay, so you raise the price. Now you have a price that somebody can sell and make a huge profit off of. And so when you have a price that you can sell and make a huge profit, what happens? Competition. Competition right. happens. And competition happens within an area that is, in a way, kind of protected by, by the laws in this sense. 
you have a market where the seller knows that if they threaten you or if they hurt you or if they kill you, you're not going to the police for help. And there's no private security that you can call on to help you because the government won't let you do that. Do you like cartels? Because this is how you get cartels. This is how you get cartels. So what So what the drug war has done, in, on one hand, the government is directly killing people when, you know, they're actually killing people. They're shooting people. They're literally shooting people. So they're killing them. They're putting them in prisons where some of, some of them are getting killed. Their lives are getting destroyed. They're separating families. And then they're creating the perfect storm for the, for the most ruthless of the ruthless. Because now you're talking about a product that, that I, I guess you could say because of the price of the product, it, it enables these these gangs, these cartels, to to payroll militaries, their own paramilitaries, and and they're not they're not they're not facing uh, how do I put it? If if for instance, if they were selling drugs and drugs were not illegal, then it would not be any problem or any issue for someone to openly and freely use arms to to resist you or to not buy drugs from you if you're going to use that armed armed tactic but when the government has right. made it illegal the government is in fact protecting the cartel because you 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 can't openly resist the thuggishness and you you know you you're one you're you're addicted to the drugs so you can't go to the government and ask them for help either so you're at the cartel's mercy unless of course you can start your own cartel <laughs> <laughs> not many people can do that so you have people killing each other on the streets in Chicago how many i mean most of those most of those deaths that's related to the drug war that's there. That's casualties of the drug war that your right, this government is, this, is fighting. Right, and this is what happens when people have no uh, actual uh, legal recourse or options for arbitration. I will I mean, say you can't... open community re- re- recourse. That's what it is. Because because right. I don't necessarily believe I need a government, but I don't have an open community recourse to go out and say these dudes are totally. I mean, they're being very evil. And the community can come out openly and respond to that evil. The government right. has it, well, shut out it, it, that he possibility. He didn't. He didn't pay me for the pound of weed that I gave him, so I, I I can't sue him to get my money back because he didn't pay me for the pound of weed or the you know the the the, the kilo of cocaine that I sold to him. I didn't get my money, so I can't. I don't have any recourse to go after him in in, in a civilized manner. The only recourse that I have is get my Tech Nine. Get my boys and go do a drive-by. That's the only recourse that I have. Did you send me a YouTube video? I did, yes. When did you send this? Yeah, like five seconds ago. It's the Scottish. It's that one. It's the Scottish cop oh, talking okay. about the seals on the cocaine and how oh, the okay. Scottish fishermen can't catch the Hold fish on. because they're swimming at forty-five knots. It's phenomenal. Okay. They don't care for any consequences of their actions. You know what I'm talking about. I remember a couple of months ago. <laughs> Hey, hold on. Oh, uh, whatever. I can't see it. Whatever. Uh, it's, it's so uh, worthwhile. Uh, do a YouTube search for Scott Squad C Class Drugs. I'm going to have to watch that. It's incredible. You'll love it. I'm telling you. Okay. So he's talking about why drug dealers don't or don't care about the environment and how they're bad for the environment. Yeah. So now Jeff Sessions wants to use the war on drugs to aggressively go after the, I'll say, the tools for liberty communication. How about that? Liberty exchange, if you will. And that is the exchange between entities that doesn't involve the prying eyes of a coercive enterprise. Be that being able to communicate through, like, 
through, through the mesh networks, through encrypted mesh networks, or, or being able to buy and sell services without the coercive enterprise right. getting its pound Crypto of flesh currency. for That's exchange. in the targets. That's, that's part of the uh, – that's, yeah. that's within the boundaries of the circle on the target also includes cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, uh, anonymous communications. Uh, We're going to add to it ghost guns. We can't have these ghost guns. We can't have 3D printed guns. We can't have these drug dealers being able to print untraceable guns. What are we going to do? It's, you know, it's, a, it, it's, it's unsafe. It's unsafe for you Americans to have this anonymous technology emerge. But you can't stop it, Jeff. You're fighting a losing war. I, I, I don't know if they realize that they're fighting against a tide that I don't think they can hold back. I, I don't know. <laughs> the, if... ship, the ship has already sailed. The cat's yeah. already out of the bag, man. But already even though I feel pretty comfortable, I feel pretty confident that that's what's going to be happening that is what's happening what i don't feel confident about is minimizing the cost during that transition because at some point they're gonna they're gonna lose control you know my brother's working on a cool idea and i'm all in with it uh even though my brother is a state of our state base it's still a great idea it's called crypto nations and uh that's coming e even whether bill's said it or not uh, people have used the phrase crypto nation but they use it usually like sometimes i've heard the phrase used to describe uh like organizations groups they call themselves the crypto nation because they're you know pro cryptocurrencies no uh belarus is kind of an example of a country that's moving towards becoming a crypto nation not exactly but there could be moving towards it because they just passed a bunch of uh well i guess they were really just the president just created it i think but uh uh they're creating all of these uh blockchain cryptocurrency friendly rules and regulations because they want to attract those types of businesses and those types of minds, they want to be a safe haven for, for crypto. At, while other nations around them are passing rules and regulations to try to, to, to choke it off, they're like, uh, wow, you know, hey, there's an opportunity here for us to maybe capture some quality folks, make some money, and, and I think, if they keep going down that route, it's going to change them a lot more than they think it's going to change them. They could end up becoming a crypto nation. And then you have, I think, other good news that happened recently. Uh, uh, a European commission working for the EU came out with some recommendations. And they feel like they can get a bead on cryptocurrency. I don't think they really can. I don't think they know how this thing is going to morph. But they feel like they can get a pretty good bead on cryptocurrencies and start regulating that like pretty quickly. But when they're looking at the blockchain, they had to admit they don't even understand it. And they also had to admit that they need it, that they can't just shut this technology out. If they do, well, other coercive enterprises will take advantage of their lack of using blockchains and develop systems built on blockchains that'll totally crush them. So they can't kill the blockchain. They have to let it thrive. And they need people in a free market kind of way, even if sort of pseudo, to keep developing this technology. But they know. They have no idea where it's going. They're like, they're recommending that you don't try to regulate blockchain right now because they have no idea what it's going to look like. And any regulations you put in now could be totally usurped, bypassed, worked around. Right, well, and That's it, what they're is, facing. This is, this is already things that we've seen uh, happen. I mean, China recently, they've, they've tried. Uh, they've, they've tried to uh, ban exchanges and they were trying to uh, you know, get get cryptocurrency into a chokehold, and what they found out was, guess what, buddy? We don't even need exchanges because all I need all I need is a wallet and a VPN, 
and all you need is a wallet and a VPN, and we can still conduct business with each other using cryptocurrency. And guess what? There's nothing you can do to stop it. As long as there is one place that exists in the world that hasn't jumped on board and said no to cryptocurrency, it's not going anywhere, dude. And then the, the, the financial, the currency part is just the tip of the iceberg. The, the big developments to come from, from cryptocurrency are still – I keep telling everybody this right now. If you are putting your money into, uh, into cryptocurrency and you're not looking at what these uh, Ethereum tokens can do and will do and are planning to do, you're missing out, man, because where that is at right now uh, I, I was just looking at the, uh, I was just looking at one the other day, Dentacoin, uh, and it's tied to you to, to uh, dent the dentistry industry and all that kind of stuff uh, to give perks and rewards and, and and all this kind of stuff, transfer dental records, yada yada yada, so on and so forth. Uh, this where they're at right now with the smart contract aspect of cryptocurrency is where Bitcoin was at in 2009. It's just beginning. It's just starting to take off now. I mean, in within, I would say within five to ten years, uh, everything that gets record that gets recorded, everything that gets documented, whether it's your, you know, your medical record, your health records, your dentistry records, uh, your mortgage, your the title for your vehicle, whatever it is, it's all going to be done with smart contracts based on the blockchain. It's just where it's 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 where it's going. And if you want to try for to now. regulate it and strangle it out, the only thing you're doing, shooting yourself in the foot. But right around the corner, right around the corner, just as they start to get their bead on blockchain, and it, it, it'll probably take them at least two or three years to try to catch up with where the blockchain is right now. Never mind where the blockchain will then be two to three years from now. Because, be. I mean, if, if right. you go to iState.tv, by the way, I'm one of the biggest focuses that that site has, which I run so I can speak with authority here is is technology is what's going on in tech and i'm following things like the blockchain developments and uh 3d printing that's another that's another decentralized uh power that's uh uh it's developing incredibly rapidly there's 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 nano factoring there's micro factoring there's there's micro grids there's so many decentralized local empowering technologies that are coming online and i mean it's it's just just behind blockchain is quantum right. computing can and that this stuff scares the crap out of bureaucrats out well, of regulators what's interesting, the regulating I, class i i tell one of the China's is is real quick. Give it another five years at most, and I believe China will probably be the leading technological country. It's 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 catching up, and in other areas, it's it's kind of already passing the U.S. China is aggressively. What's interesting is China. It's 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 playing this weird game where it's. Because it sees the technolo the the strategic advantage to develop these decentralizing technologies, it's it's developing them rapidly, it, with a with I believe a false belief that it will somehow be able to control these technologies that it's on it uh, it's unleashing. What what happened recently in in 2016, it launched a satellite which was capable of computing or, or communicating through a quantum computing network. And so just, just this last couple of weeks, they actually sent a signal from China to, I forget which other country, between two countries through this completely encrypted and secured quantum computing network now where quantum computing is right now is the amount of cooling that they need makes these well the cooling systems are huge but but i'm i'm telling you it's only a matter of maybe a year or two at most where they, they, they've got technologies around the corner that's that's going to eliminate the need for these massive cooling systems to to keep these quantum computers going and there's, there's, I mean, these the, the qubit 
will undo blockchain. And the qubit is the, the building block for, for quantum computing. It will undo blockchain. And on I, in the blockchain world, people are working fast to try to figure out a way. And I, and I believe a lot of them probably do it. Uh, quantum computing is a threat to the blockchain that it will totally break its encryption, be able to break it, no problem. But on the flip side of that, quantum computing is mm, highly encrypted. So again, you have another technology that is emerging that it is allowing for the creation of anonymity. Right. And <laughs> I'm I'm telling you, folks, it's just a matter of time. Jeff Sessions, he... You know this 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 war on drugs. It's it's a really powerful, convenient tool for the for these guys, and they're gonna beat that horse, man. They're gonna beat that that dead horse until that sucker turns into glue. Yeah, that that. Well, here, but that's the thing what, that they don't understand is that as as these uh, as these decentralized anonymous technologies start to emerge and start to pick up pace. Uh, they start to gain widespread uh, acceptance and widespread use. As this stuff starts to happen, the beautiful thing is that it has this wonderful side effect of making government and government regulators absolutely obsolete and irrelevant. That's why they're afraid. This is why they're afraid of this type of technology. It's why they, they're scrambling right now to find the perfect boogeyman. They really need people to fundamentally fear <coughs> these technologies because if they do not fear these, they know that they cannot stop these technologies in and of themselves. The only way that they can stop these technologies is, you know, I, I brought up this example many times and I'm going to bring it up again. This is the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. There's a moment in it where... The peasants were confronting Richard II on the battlefield. They had all the power. They had everything on their side. And the only thing that prevented them from doing away from the whole monarchy, and who knows the direction that England would have done it, gone at that time, the only thing that prevented them was an idea. And it was uh, the divine right of kings. All that Richard had to say was, listen, I'm the king. You know, I am I am appointed by God. And that and that got them to back off. And that got them to believe the lies that the king told them. And then they retreated. And then pretty quickly, as soon as the, the king and his henchmen had an opportunity, they began to hack off the leaders. And pretty quickly, that was the end of the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. They're going to have to sell. They're going to have to come up with a new sales pitch to justify the coercive enterprise model. Because the coercive enterprise model right now, it's becoming increasingly obvious that the coercive enterprise model, it doesn't offer the same benefits that it once did. And it's costing you more and more to get less and less benefits. And you see these technologies that are emerging that are enabling you to do things right here. You know, it's, it's why, you know, like 20 years ago, I, I didn't hear many laws that prevented people from going off grid. I mean, there were some, but 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 now it's become much more commonplace. The, the localities, states, they have laws that prevent you from from being off grid from why is that from there's no reason for it right and they know that if they have these laws it it rises up the cost for you to actually have self-sustaining power in your home that that you're producing you know through renewable energy uh so they have to pass laws to try to prevent you from discovering yet again in yet another way how it is that with the technology of today small scale free association communities down to the individual level I'll say can actually outperform 
the large scale scale systems that used to at least whether they actually could or not I would argue that they could they they used to be able to provide a cheaper product a cheaper service than your small scale local local model would but now that's 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 starting to go away more and more and I mean I don't know what the new selling point is and and is the new selling point I mean how many more terrorists did they come up with to scare you Yeah I'm talking to you Nick right. you're still on the show Right how many more boogeymen Right how many right. more boogeymen I mean we're running out of we are running out of boogeymen how many times can you possibly hear well well well, what you 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 think three D printing is a good idea? You must want another nine eleven. Yeah, because they can three D print bombs. Right, Bitcoin. Yeah, that, that's the currency of terrorists. Like, terrorists. Oh, so, that's right. Sorry, man. Well, sorry, now it's buddy. Monero. Monero is uh, apparently the the currency. Monero. They're trying to because Monero is a far more effective Anonymous. privacy right. coin. Right. Yeah. That and Zcash with the yeah, ZK well, snarks. Zcash doesn't have the widespread use that Monero does, so I'm not a big Zcash right. fan. The terrorists but. aren't hip to that yet. <laughs> right. Al, that Al well, Qaeda, Al Qaeda ain't using the Zcash yet. Right, but either way, these these privacy coins, you know, uh, and and you know what what makes you think that there aren't privacy coins out there that none of us have heard of that are truly right. Privacy coins that are people using to exchange value between one another. I'm not with and if they don't exist, believe you me, they will. But I'm betting they already exist. And if you haven't heard from them of them, that's because <laughs> you're not supposed to have heard from them. Right. I that's guarantee. By design. Yeah, it's by design. I mean, if you really want a truly, truly privacy coin, then have a coin that only a very select few people know but they can still it's it's a large enough network that they can exchange value on and they can probably they probably have methods to pretty quickly where and when they need uh what, what's 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 the the the, the term use you shape shifting is that what it's called yeah shape shift so so you can shape shift it to whatever more visible currency you need to and you can do it in a way that nobody knows so yeah, good luck. Good luck trying to contain the coming anonymity, the coming self-reliance. You're, you're just not going to be able to do it. And and we're just about out of time. I thought we would end up spending yeah. the whole show. Well, the cool this. thing, the cool thing about all this, man, is that the we're and and I don't know if we're going to be able to bear witness to what's to to, to what's coming, but I'm pretty sure that our kids are going to be able to uh, live in this world where uh, uh, all of these all of these fundamental changes are going to become manifest. We're we're think, right on the cusp of all of this. I think you have a pretty good chance. Uh, and I, I mean, yeah, right? Everything's speeding if you eat up. right, <laughs> right? If if you eat right and you no. you know what I mean, and you don't no. drink too much and you don't smoke no. cigarettes and. You have Heart a pretty realistic chance family. of li living another twenty years at least. I hope. Yeah, you. This is going to happen within twenty years. This could happen within ten. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened in ten, but I feel feel pretty confident that it'll happen within twenty, if not ten. And you know, two years ago, I would have said, "Well, yeah, twenty years." Probably. Now I'm like 20 years, definitely. 10 years, maybe. Yeah, there's a good, there's a good chance. There's a good I chance. Mean, dude, dude, if you don't go to iState.tv regularly, you should. You should bookmark it. You should track the stories that I'm pulling together, that I'm aggregating. And if you do, you if you even if you just scan these headlines daily, you'll start to see what I'm seeing. And and what you're getting is just an aggregate. I go through two or three thousand links a day, so I see even more stuff that I don't even get on the site. But I mean, things are happening, and the degree to which people are are working with one another across 
geopolitical boundaries is also really, really incredible. What's, what's really incredible is what I'm seeing is, on one hand, globalization is speeding up big time. On the other hand, ties to your locality and your desire to have local say, local sovereignty, that's also spreading at the same time. So these two seemingly diametrically opposed trends are happening. And it's it's amazing. It's really amazing to see. And I think I think on that note we're going to wrap up the show here. Why don't you tell folks what's coming up Friday night? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh Friday night at uh 10 p.m. I always get confused because I'm a central timer. So I always got to relay everything in Eastern time. Wait. You're a central timer? I've lost I'm a you. central timer. You're, you're, you're a born and bred Pennsylvanian. You spent a few days in tennis, Texas, Man. and now you're a freaking central timer, man? I'm that a central right. timer. That's right. So it's I'm, not I'm right. getting, I get, it throws me off because I got to think, wait a minute. What time is it on? Uh, so 10 p.m. Eastern on Friday night, uh, LRN.FM. That's the Liberty Radio Network. Uh, you can catch me and uh, co host Matthew Taylor for the Torchwood Report. Don't miss and it. You, and I'm telling you, you need to get that that uh, that archive I gotta get situation. Archive. Yeah, Needs you getting to be it? Done. You getting it? You gonna Needs get it to figured be. out? Because man, Eventually. whenever whenever I'm available, it's just not that much. But whenever I'm available, I I listen to the show when when I'm available on Friday night. It's just not often that I am. And then I can't listen. I I I'd, I'd listen to the archive. I like I love the show. I enjoy it. Well, we do get re-aired several times throughout the oh, week. Oh, come on. That's not, not the only time. No, no, I need I need uh, on-demand play, okay? Yeah. I, I have right. a you period of time where I listen to my car. podcast. It's in right. the morning. Right, when you're pooping. Well, I wake up, I'm drinking my coffee, and I listen to, that's when I, usually from about like 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., that's when I listen to the podcast that I listen to. And I listen while I work. I usually, I got busy work during that period of time, most of the time, so I can work while I listen. At any rate, I will be back tomorrow afternoon, 12.30 p.m. on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. And I'll be doing headlines you may have missed for Thursday tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, right here on the Liberty Principal Facebook page, Lou Sander of the Freedom Fiends will be joining me once again for Is Daily Thursday. And it says OBS Studio disconnected, reconnecting. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to reconnect and everything's going to be fine. If you're watching this on YouTube, you are unaffected by that notification. <laughs> but on that note, I'm going to say good night, everybody. And Niz, you want to say good night, everybody? Or not. You don't have to. You know. Right. No biggie. I can say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks we'll for see you here. for Is Daily Wednesday. We'll see you next Wednesday at the same time, 9 p.m., on the same channel, the Liberty Facebook page, or the Liberty Principal Facebook page. Good night, everybody. And remember, the people who need to control you or want to control you need to control the news. Bear that in mind. Good night.